We are on lesson 5.1, frequency distributions and graphs. And so we're going to talk about each one of those. Um, to prepare a frequency distribution, you basically are just counting how many times something occurs in your um, data that you're given. And then you organize it by doing tally marks and then and then right so here's five tally marks so the frequency is five for 1000 one right for the 2000 there's another five and so on and so you just make yourself a little chart and then you're able to see how many um, times something has occurred in your data this is an example same kind of thing so you were given uh, this table right and then you have to organize it so that you can see how many times each of these costs has occurred in case you need to use it for a graph or, you know, some interpretation of the data. Um, sometimes when we do weighted mean down the road, we would need to know that. So you'll see that in a future lesson. Okay, so we are going to make a table as one of the examples here. And basically, um, we're going to just write out um, each part of this. So if this was the sales, right, because it says Pete's Variety Shop reported the following sales for the first 20 days of May. So we're going to label one column sales, and then we're going to have our tally marks, and then total it here for the frequency of each, um, each sale right how much it was so um, we're going to list right we've got 100 200 and so on and we go to you have to you can look at the table and see that the cells go from 100 to 700 so we have to have that um, marked off that way. You could put some lines across if you need to, if that helps you read the, the table better. That's kind of up to you. And then we just go through and count, basically. So how many times does 100 occur? There's 1, 2, 3, and another one. There's four of them. And so we have a frequency of 4 for the 100s. And then we go on to 200. So there's a 1 and 2. So we've got 2 for those for the 200. Uh, 300 occurs one time. And then 400, there's 1, 2. And that looks like all I'm finding for that one. So two times on frequency, and then 500, one, two, and I don't see any more. Oh, I just noticed I left off 600. You know, sometimes I get in a hurry and do silly things. Okay, so now let's look for 600. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five. All right, one, two, three, four, five. I didn't finish my frequency part when I noticed that I left out 600. And then we have 700, one, two, three, four times. And so that's basically it. And then you can do whatever you need to with that if you're going to graph it or something else. So that was the, the total totals for our frequency table. Okay, so now we're going to talk about bar graphs, line graphs, and circle graphs. Um, and this explains, you know, what a bar graph shows. And I know that you guys have looked at bar graphs before. It just basically gives you a nice representation representation that you can look at quickly and see what's going on. Um, we use vertical or horizontal bars, so you can draw these um, either way. And notice on this one, it's saying the frequency of purchases and the price of computers. So you can see that they're purchasing computers and then the height of the bars is related to uh, the number of times that they were purchased for that price. And so... Um, that's that's just a, a a way to show data in an easy to read format. 
Okay, so we're going to make a bar graph, and I will probably pause this video while I'm drawing some of this, just because of the time involved. So I'm going to, I have the um, the little graph on the next page, and then let's look at this data. So it says the United Nations states the gender pay gap will not close for 70 years. Women across the world earn 77 cents for every one dollar of what men earn. Construct a bar graph reflecting the following Harvard University study on pay for women compared to one dollar for men. So we're going to have a one dollar um, um, bar for every single one of these. And then it's going to show a bar beside it showing the pay for women. So for each career type, financial specialist, they're at 66 cents, physician 71, aircraft 70, aircraft pilot 71, accountant 76, lawyers 82, and nurses 89. And so basically we make the first bar graph and we can, um, the first two, right and then we can just label everything that we need to along one side i'm going to label um up to well this graph has a little more space than we actually need and i'm going to go whoops i'm going by 20 cents oh geez let me let me write this so 0 0.20 we're going up by 20s or 20 cents yeah, let me get this labeled. Um, and the reason I'm going to pause it is just so that the video doesn't end up so long and that we can get it completed um, in a reasonable time. Okay. All right, so then I'm going to stop this. I'm, I'm going to pause for a minute. I'm going to put on some, put some things and then I'll bring it back to you to, so you can see. Okay, so now I have this roughly drawn, and based on the information from that previous slide, all you can do really is estimate whenever you're making your bar lengths, and as you can see, some of mine are not perfect as far as the size and all, but you know, you get the, the general idea, and that's what we want to do. All right. On the next one, we're talking about line graphs. And you know, line graphs are really good for showing trends in data. And so those can be very helpful uh, when you're just trying to look at something really quick and trying to interpret something, uh, then a line graph is going to be helpful there. And so we're going to make a quick line graph. Um, and once again, I'm going to pause as I label everything. As you can see, we really only have four different things that we have to graph this time. So we can graph uh, with, usually time goes on the bottom part of your uh, graph. And I'm having some glitchy stuff going on here with my program. So I'm going to stop the, the video for a minute and then I'll come back and then show you some more. Okay, so I've got this labeled, and I based um, the, the way I labeled the dollars on the side, the, the amount of the cells, on my data, right? So my smallest number was 8,000, largest was 18,000. So I went um, in $5,000 increments up the scale here. Okay, and then I've got, I've got the time on the bottom. Of course, you know this is years labeling is good and putting a title is good uh, whenever you're making a graph and so then I just graph the point so for the 8,000 you know I know it's above the mi the middle uh, part because that would be like 7,500 this one is just a little bit above and then this one is a little bit above halfway between those two numbers right the 10,000 and the 15 and then 18,000 would be somewhere above the middle portion of that. And then you just connect these with uh, lines moving to each one. And then that's basically it. We've drawn a line graph to show that the cells have been increasing starting in 2012 through 2015. Okay, so now we're going to talk about circle graphs. On circle graphs, uh, we're going to show that you can use percentages, you can use degrees, and in our book, we we sometimes uh, convert to degrees, to degrees, so you can see that. And then you just basically take the circle and and split it into segments, uh, showing the information that you're graphing. 
and so you can examine this example a little bit more. We are going to uh, draw a circle graph and you begin by drawing the circle and then you convert your percentages to uh, a decimal and multiply that by 360 to get the number of degrees. And then you could be off just a little bit, right? You should e It should equal 360 degrees or 100%, but that can vary just a tad based on rounding, okay? All right, so we are going to take this and make a circle graph. So we're going to take the percent, whoops, I'm still on my line there. Oh, let's do that. Okay, so we're going to take the percent in decimal form times 360. And honestly, you can draw the line graph uh, without doing the number of degrees. To be real accurate, you would use a protractor, but we're really not going to get into uh, being that drastic. So we get 126 degrees for this one, 0.28 times 360, 100.8 degrees, 0.2 times 360, and we're at 72 degrees, and then 0 0.17 times 360, and we are at 61.2 uh, degrees. Okay, and so basically then um, you just label your graph and then um, try to get all your lines in there. Now what I do a lot of times is I say okay so straight up here straight down there that would be 180 degrees or 50 percent of the graph each half of that. Uh, this would cut it into 25 percent or 90 degree portions and then you can split it up even more to help you just get your lines in there. All right so I'm going to put in the information um, with with me paused and then I'll come back and show you what we have on the graph. Okay. Okay. So now I have the circle dra graph drawn and labeled. You want to label it with the percentages and what those categories were. Remember when you're drawing a graph, you're always looking at it as, as something, oops, someone might see. I was trying to get that little mark off of there and they would need to know what it was about because they might not see this other information but just the graph. So you want to be sure to label so that they could understand what was happening here because it says travel expenses and then I give each category with a percentage in the graph. Now once again you're estimating if you're not using a protractor so you just do the best you can with this to get everything um, with the um, the right portion of the circle as close as possible. All right, and so that's the end of this video. My 20 and my 17% look maybe a little closer together than they should be, I'm not sure. But anyway, so we're going to stop the video here. That is it for this section, and so bye everyone.